Recently, Ukrainian forces have had some uh, surprising successes against uh, the Russian army. Partly this is uh, thanks to some weaponry that the US has donated to Ukraine. Well, there's some interesting history, and uh, it goes back to the ancient Chinese, who first discovered gunpowder sometime the 8th or the 9th century, it isn't clear exactly when, but Chinese alchemists were searching for an elixir of longevity, and they hit upon uh, saltpeter, uh, potassium nitrate, probably because they found that it had the ability to preserve meat. And somehow they chanced upon a formula of potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal, which when lit in a confined space, exploded. They put this to use as fire arrows, the first ever piece of artillery. Well, by the 14th century, the Europeans had made use of this and uh, formulated the first cannons. These were just iron tubes packed with gunpowder and uh, topped off with a cannonball. When the gunpowder was lit, the cannonball was uh, fired out. And of course, there was a quest to make uh, better and better cannons with longer and longer ranges because it was clear that an army that was equipped with a longer ranged piece of artillery uh, had a better chance of winning a battle. By the First World War, there were some really large pieces of artillery. The Germans made the Paris gun. This was gigantic, and it had a range of 120 kilometers, the largest uh, such piece of artillery ever made. This, this still holds the record for the largest, uh, longest range fired by uh, a, a traditional type of, uh, of gun. Uh, it wasn't very accurate, so it was more of a psychological weapon than anything else. In the Second World War, once again, the Germans introduced the Schwarzer Gustav, which was a railway gun. Again, a monstrous piece of equipment, and it could fire a projectile roughly 47 kilometers. But it was not very mobile. It was hard to use, and only two of these were ever built. On the other hand, they also came up with the Sturtiger. This was a far more mobile piece of artillery, and it fired the first rocket-assisted projectile. So the projectile would be fired in the traditional way from the cannon with gunpowder, but once it left the barrel, uh, a small rocket motor that was in the projectile lit and propelled it further. And it ha this had a range of about six kilometers and was quite highly uh, accurate. The U.S., uh, of course, improved over the years upon this, and uh, one of the weapons that now has uh, been given to the Ukrainian army uh, are, is a type of cannon that fires a rocket-assisted uh, projectile. It has a range of some 60 kilometers, and the uh, propellant is interesting because it is modeled on the propellant that was used in the solid fuel boosters of space shuttle. Uh, aluminum powder is the fuel, ammonium perchlorate is the oxidizing agent. But even uh, far more effective uh, is uh, a, a rocket launcher that uh, the U.S. also has given to, uh, to the Ukrainian army. This is not a, a cannon, but an actual mobile rocket launcher that is fitted onto a truck and it can launch a, a rocket uh, about 90 kilometers. Exactly what the propellant is, for obvious reasons, has not been disclosed, but uh, it looks like it is also a mixture of aluminum powder and ammonium perchlorate. So certainly, artillery has come a long way since the Chinese fire arrows. And that for today is our Kapa Joe.